Well, welcome back, yep. everyone. May is Stroke Awareness Month, and learning to spot the signs and symptoms of a stroke is critical in order to receive quick treatment. Well, Jamie Quellhorst, uh, Executive Director of Nursing at Lyman Memorial Health System, is here to talk to us about stroke awareness and treatment. So thank you for joining us, Jamie. Yes, I'm happy to be here. Thank you. All right. Now, can you tell us more about what a stroke actually is? Yeah, no, in simplest terms, it's just a disruption in the blood flow to the brain, and that deprives those brain cells of nutrients and oxygen, and that uh, disruption can be caused by a blockage, or it can be caused because of a leakage within one of those vessels in the brain. Very important that you uh, be able to identify that uh, signs and symptoms of a stroke right away and get treatment right away. Right. Now, now we know stroke is a leading cause of death in the United States. However, it is also treatable and preventable, correct? Oh, that is correct. And I, I really want to start with preventable, right? So let's really talk about things that you can control versus what you can't. Okay. So things you can control would be like your lifestyle, you know, eating healthy and getting exercise. It could be really taking care of yourself, having your annual examinations and making sure you're looking at your heart health. Uh, make sure you don't have atrial fibrillation, make sure your cholesterol is appropriate, your blood pressure is where it's supposed to be. All those things are so important to prevent stroke. Things you can't change, uh, that's going to be your age, right? You can't change your age, you can't change your genetics. So you've got to work with the things that you can change uh, to counteract some of the things that we can't uh, do anything about. Right. Now, now I understand there is a simple acronym to help our community understand the signs of a stroke. Now, what, what is the acronym and what does each of the letters stand for? Yeah, so everyone needs to remember be fast. Okay, so B stands for balance. You're thinking, oh, can that person talk? Are they swaying when they're walking? Is just their gait different? you know, from what it normally is. Then you talk about the E and that's your eyes, you know, do they have blurred vision, okay? When you're looking at them, are their eyes being able to follow you? Uh, then you get to F and you're talking about face. You're looking at symmetry, right? Is their facial drooping on one side versus the other? Or if they smiled, is the cheeks only go up on one side? Or they raise their eyebrows? Is it just one side versus the other? You've got arms. You're just asking an individual, put your arms out for me. And you're going to see a drift to one side or the other if there's something going on neurologically. And then we talk about uh, the S or speech, uh, slurred speech or inability to find words. So if you point to something like a clock, they should be able to identify what is that object. So those are some simple ways of asking people um, uh, questions that'll help you identify a stroke. And then T is the most important as well, and that's called time, right? So if you identify uh, a stroke, make sure you write down the last known well of someone or a loved one or yourself if you can, um, and then call 911. Very important to call 911. Right, and you, as you just mentioned, 911, many people are still fearful of calling 911 or actually just going to the emergency center. But it is critical for them to call 911 for a stroke, correct? Yeah, I think what people don't remember is all the training that is uh, put into all levels of the EMS personnel around our region. I mean, they are fabulous and they are highly trained and proficient in recognizing signs and symptoms of stroke. And what it does for us when people call 911 versus drive themselves in is that gives EMS time to contact us. And that gives us a 10 minutes heads up to say, all right, is our CAT scanner ready? Is lab down here? Is our neurologist ready to see this patient? So it really does give us appropriate time so we can uh, treat people um, in a timely manner. Right, and what can someone expect when they arrive to the emergency center at Lima Memorial for a stroke? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's it's kind of a little hectic. So uh, what happens is we are uh, very proficient as well, where we know exactly what needs to be done. So as soon as someone enters our door and they say key words, it prompts us to push that high alert button. And we, uh, lots of people will come in the room and we're going to do lots of evaluations. We're going to be drawing blood. We're going to be taking someone to the CAT scan. Uh, we're going to have the ER physician. They're all board certified ER physicians here at Lyle Memorial. We have our neurologist on board. Um, and we're going to do everything we can to diagnose, uh, to evaluate, and then to treat that individual. All right. Well, Jamie Qualers, I really do appreciate you coming on today. Yeah, thank you for having me. My pleasure. All right, well, don't go away because we have more and we return.